Hello learners, in this lecture we will see what is the geometric design of a runway and what all are the factors that we need to consider for the geometric design of a runway. So the, we all know that a runway is an important airport element and the items to be considered in the geometric design of the runways are as follows. The first is the length is a very important factor for us. Then we have the longitudinal and the effective gradient. Then we have rate of change of longitudinal gradient. Then there is safety area, the side distance, transverse gradient, and finally the width of this. So uh, considering all these things, the geometric design of a runway is established. So we'll try to see all these thing, things in details. The first is about the length. The basic runway length will depend on the category in which the airport falls as per the ICAO classification. If you remember in the first lecture, we had understood that there is something called as airport classification. And based on this classification, we have like airport A, we have airport B, C, D and E, right? And here we have something called as basic runway length, which is given as minimum and maximum for the type of airport. So this length, whatever I'm telling now, it is completely depending on this. If it is a A airport, then your minimum runway length has to be 2100 meter, right? That's the first thing. Second thing, if you refer in the previous lecture, we had seen the correction factors that we are supposed to apply. So the actual runway length is obtained by making an adjustment for the elevation, gradient, temperature with a basic runway length. So this is a runway length actually what we need to provide for a type of airport. But considering the elevation factor, considering the gradient factor, and considering the temperature, there will be error in this particular runway. So after applying all those correction factors, finally, whatever runway length I'm going to get that I need to consider, right? So that is the first factor that is called as length. The second is the longitudinal and effective gradient. So what is this longitudinal and effective gradient? So the longitudinal gradient of a runway increases the required runway length and also affects the performance in number of ways. The recommendation given by ICAO for the maximum longitudinal gradient and maximum effective gradient. Longitudinal gradient is directly proportional to the runway length. Let us say if this is a runway what I have, let us say this is a runway what I have. And if this is making an angle theta here, and let me consider this distance as X and this distance as Y. Then if I take tan theta, you know, tan theta is equal to y upon x so as this theta keeps on increasing as this keeps this theta if it keeps on increasing let us say if it goes like this if it goes like this no so what will happen the runway length is going to increase the runway length is going to increase the same thing you can see here the longitudinal gradient is directly proportional to the runway length and the longitudinal gradient of a runway increases the required runway length and also affects the performance in the number of ways so as far as possible this angle we need to keep minimum so that what will happen, the runway length is not going to increase. So how do you take care of that? So for that, this certain recommendations is given by ICAO. So this is that recommendation that is longitudinal and effective gradient. Again, it depends on type of airport. We have A, B and C and here we have D and E airport. So the maximum longitudinal gradient, the percentage is 1.50 for A, B and C and it is 2.0 for D and E and maximum effective gradient we have understood what is effective gradient in the uh, while we were solving the problems. So it has to be 1.0% for A, B and C airport and for D and E it has to be 2%. So for D and E maximum longitudinal gradient and the maximum effective gradient is 2 and 2 and it is 1.51 for A, B and C. The next factor is about the safety area. So the runway safety area is an area which is cleared, drained and graded. So you can see it here, this area, what you can see from here, this area, what you can see from here to here, it is called as runway safety area. And this is my structural payment. That is a runway. This is my runway. And beyond this, this certain portion, what we have, no, we call it as a shoulder in order to carry the emergency aircraft and all we use a shoulder, even in the road construction. Also, we provide shoulder. So just in case if there is an emergency breakdown and all we can make use of the shoulder, right? So it includes the structural pavement, the shoulders on either side of a runway and the additional width. You can see it here. We have this, uh, let me delete it. We have a runway here. Then we have a shoulders here. And then we have this additional width on both the side. The shoulders are generally unpaved as they are used to be 
only in the case of emergency this shoulders what we have no they are actually unpaved whereas my runway will be paved material here it is unpaved because here usually in case of emergency we try to use them right so that is the reason we don't try to make this as a paved one the, they are the most to be turfed or prepared of st stabilized soil this shoulders what we are using they are either made up of normal soil you try to do the soil stabilization there or the normal soil we try to keep there the provision of shoulders grants a sense of security to the pilot as he is able to perform the operations of take off and landing with confidence so this shoulders additional distance will make the pilot confident so that if tomorrow something goes wrong if he is not able to at least land in this area at least he have this much width so that he can at least land with a confidence so that is the reason uh, this is another advantage of providing a shoulder now coming to the ICA recommendation for instrumental runway it has to be 300 meter and for non instrumental runway it has to be 150 meter for a b and c type of airport and 78 meter for d and e types of airport so if you see it here this is the entire safety area what you can see this is a extended runway safety area this is also extended runway safety area and this gap from here to here it has to be 60 meter and from here to here it has to be 60 meter so the length of the safety area should extend 60 meter beyond the runway on its either end that means this is the end of my runway and this also let us say from here to here on both the side you have to provide a 60 meter thus the total length of the safety area will be equal to the length of runway whatever is the length of runway let us say if the run length of runway is something 6000 meter for that i need to add additional 60 mm on both the sides so 60 plus 60 that is 120 that is what you mean by equal to the length of runway plus 120 meter if stopway is provided the landing strip should be extend a distance of 60 meter beyond the stopway so if you are providing a stopway then it has to be extended by 60 meter to provide a stopway so this was all about the safety area so the main idea of providing a safety area is that so that the if just in case if something goes wrong the pilot will have enough confidence so that at least he can take his aircraft on this so that there is some minimal damage to the aircraft the next is the side distance so there is generally no side distance restrictions has the longitudinal gradients for the runway are quite gentle right so even in the highways even in even for the road also we try to give the side distance but here it says that there is generally no side distance restrictions has the longitudinal gradients for the runway are quite gentle so usually we try to keep a very gentle gradient for the runway but there are chances for the collision of the aircraft at the point where two runways or a runway or a taxiway intersect each other if a adequate side distance is not provided right so that means whenever let us say if this is a runway so from here this particular point is to be easily seen right so if this is very steep something like this if the runway is something then what will happen if the aircraft is here then this particular point he is not able to see so there are chances of collision and all right so in order to take care of this according to icao for a b and c types of airport any points 3 meter above the surface of a runway should be manually visible from a distance equal to half the runway length that means for example if let us consider this as my runway the blue portion and let the length of the runway be l so i'm dividing it by exactly half so this distance from here to here it has to be l by 2 it's written here right should be manually visible from a distance equal to half the runway length right and now if i arbitrarily take any two points if i take any two points on this so it should be visible from 3 meter it's written here for a b and c types of airport any points 3 meter above the surface of a runway if this is a runway from here above okay you have to see it from the top from the top if i see this two points okay then it should be easily seen at a distance of 3 meter any points 3 meter above the surface of a runway should be manually visible from a distance equal to half the runway so within this within this area if you are standing at the top of 3 meter if you see any points right they should be clearly visible that is what you mean by a b c types of airport and the second one is that for d and e types of airport there should be unobstructed line of sight from any point 3 meter above runway to all other points 2 meter above runway within a distance of at least one half of the runway so in the second condition what is trying to tell if this is a point on a runway i have taken which is at a distance of 3 meter i am standing here so try to understand this 
for D and E types of airport, there should be unobstructed line of sight from any point three meter above the runway. So let us consider this as one point and which is three meter above the runway. And to all other points, let us consider these are the another two points. Okay, these are the another two points which are actually two meter from here to here above the runway. Above the runway from here to here, above the runway from here to here, it is two meter, right? So any points three meter above the runway to all other points two meter above the runway within a distance of at least one half of the runway. So this is another half of the runway. So within this, what has to happen? This line of sight should be clearly visible. If you're standing at this top, any point on this particular area, which is at a height of two meter, should be easily seen through this particular point. So the light you can see option. Uh, word written here line of sight if you're standing here from here this point should be clearly visible which is at the height of two meter from the runway so these are the certain recommendation given by them just we need to understand next is the width the runway width varies from 45 meter to 18 meter depending upon the type of airport even this also we have seen in the initial classes uh, what are the you know runway length that we need to give for the various classifications of the airport like a b c d a, e and all so the mid of an airport is governed by, so this width, whatever we have, no, it is governed by two factors. The first is the air traffic. So what it says, it is observed that the distribution of air traffic is such that the central portion of about 12 meter on either side of the center line of the runway. That means if this is the center line of my runway, this is my center line of the runway, right? So 12 meter on either side, that is from here 12 meter and from here 12 meter. 12 meter on either side of the center line of the runway is subjected to maximum loading and it goes on decreasing towards edge. That means from here 12 meter and from here 12 meter, this much portion it is always subjected to the maximum loading. Because if you see here also, no, look at this aircraft, it is exactly at the center line and the entire weight of this aircraft will be on 12 meter from this side and 12 meter on this side, right? So that is the reason this particular area should be strong enough so that, uh, strong enough and maximum load will be coming here so uh, it's subjected to the maximum loading and it goes on decreasing towards the edge so towards the edges if you see you know here hardly you have the weight of this wings right but in the center portion you have this entire weight of the aircraft where people are actually sitting here and the entire engine and all most of the weight is here only thus the central 24 meter width of a runway payment takes more concentrated air traffic load so this side if it is 12 and if this side if it is 12 this total will be 24 meter so this middle portion from here to here this 24 meter is going to take more concentrated air traffic load so right this is about the width then we have another point that is outermost edge of an aircraft so the outermost part of a machine of the largest aircraft is likely to use the airport should not extend beyond the pavement. So if you see it here, so this is the aircraft what I have and these are the engines what we have below the wings, right? And so what it's trying to tell the outermost part of a machine of a largest aircraft is likely to use the airport should not extend beyond the pavement. The shoulders are made up of loose soil or stabilizing the soil or by turfing them. That means if this is my pavement, right? Let us consider this as the width of my pavement. Then this big engines, what you can see, you know, is telling that this should not extend beyond this because if it extends beyond this, then what will happen beyond this? We have a shoulders, right? Beyond this pavement width of the pavement, we have the shoulders and these shoulders we have seen from the, we have, we have just understood. They are actually made up of soil or, you know, normal loose soil or by stabilizing the soil. Now, since these wings, since these uh, machines, what we have, they keep on rotating, okay? And what will happen since they keep on rotating and the soil which is under them, that is a shoulder soil, they are not, they don't have enough strength in them. And also due to this uh, rotation, what will happen? Whatever mud and all we have in that shoulder, no? it will try to get into the engine. As a result of that, what will happen? It will spoil the aircraft. So if these precautions are not taken, the loose material from the shoulder is likely to get into get entry into the machine and damage the same. So the distance between the outer engine of a large aircraft transport and the longitudinal axis of aircraft should be 13.5 meters. So that is the reason what we need to do from here to here, it has to be 13.5 meter. The distance between the outer engine, this outer engine of the large transport and the longitudinal axis of the aircraft, it has to be 13.5 meter 
and as far as possible this thing should be like this see if this is my pavement if, let us consider if this is if this is my pavement let us consider this engine should be within this these two engines what we have it has to be within this so beyond this if there is a shoulder i mean there will be a shoulder so that what will happen this engine is not exposed to that shoulder area if it is exposed then whatever soil loose soil is there it will enter into this to avoid that we have to try to keep it within the pavement length within the width of the pavement and the last one what we have is a transverse gradient so the transverse gradient is provided for quick disposal of the surface water the accommodation of the water on the runway produces hazardous situation for the aircraft using such runway so according to the icao the maximum limits of transverse gradients are as follows it is it should be 1.5% for a b and c types of airport and it has to be 2% for d and e types of airport so if you try to look into this cross section this is my runway this particular area what i have no this much this is my runway here you have to maintain a slope of 1.5% maximum and beyond this what we have beyond this we have shoulders beyond this it will be shoulder so in the shoulder if you try to see is trying to tell us it has to be maximum 2.5% and maximum 2.5% why is that in the shoulder the you know gradient is more why is that there is more steep in the shoulder area the reason is that in the shoulder area you usually make use of uh, soil and all right you don't have a rigid pavement or you don't have that paved surface so if there is no paved surface what will happen whenever it starts to rain and all it will absorb more water the soil will absorb more water and there won't be a quick flow of water so if the quick flow of water has to happen then i need to provide a steep uh, something like a steep gradient something like this so that the moment the water falls it will directly try to go out rather than getting into the soil so that is the reason near the shoulder we are increasing that slope and giving it 2.5 whereas here in the runway we don't have to increase to that level because it is a paved one so it will not absorb the water and there will be a flow of water from here and beyond that in this particular area wherever we have this is a maximum 5% you have to provide and finally the water from here will be taken into the inlet or the manhole and from there the drainage system will be provided and those ditches and uh, drains will be provided so that the water can be carried away easily right so this is what it is written here so right 1.5% for a b and c types of airport and 2% for d and e types of airport so there is no minimum limit now we have seen everything as maximum here that is 1.5 max 2.5 max and 5 max so there is no such uh, limitation for the minimum one but as far as experience is concerned uh, it has been found that 0.5% for the satisfactory drainage has to be provided minimum 0.5% this gradient minimum 0.5% gradient has to be provided so that there won't be you know uh, water gathering in that particular area right yeah so this entire thing is 150 meter from here to here it has to be 150 that is from the center it will be 75 on this side and 75 on this side whereas this is a 45 meter runway what i have taken and this entire thing is a landing strip then this entire is this center portion is runway this is shoulder and this is shoulder yeah so this was all about the geometric design of a runway Uh, which are those points we need to consider about the length the width the longitudinal gradient and the other things so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you